source of this article. But the other part right there that I read for you. Good morning, everyone. It's Friday morning, 26th of uh, June, uh, <laughs> May, Thursday, February. So I was just thinking about February when our lease runs up. God, I hate what my teeth look like without my supporting my lip. <laughs> Still waiting on the money for the dentures. Oh, no, what's that? Something just buzzed. <clears throat> Phone vibrated for something. Oh, <laughs> is YouTube telling me I'm live on YouTube? <laughs> That's funny. Yes, I know YouTube. I'm live on YouTube because I'm live on YouTube. <laughs> um, today's subject is John. He is doing a little better. He is much more alert, yet still not talking. Um, very concerned with his brain, but they were optimistic at this point. He does not have a fever anymore. Um, and he seems to be responding more to uh, people talking about things. Um, whether he doesn't fully seem to react to uh, some stimuli that I would have thought would alert, get him to, to make a response. Uh, and I'm just sort of sitting here waiting for people to come in because there's still nobody watching my channel. But I thought at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, there may be some people watching. I do know. <laughs> I usually myself turn off all notifications and watch when I feel like it. I actually haven't watched too many other people's blogs. Uh, I haven't really had the time. I'm spending so much time either making a video, reviewing it, getting it uploaded, which the 360 videos are a bloody nightmare. The uh, fact that it breaks them into eight minute pieces really throws a monkey wrench into things. Uh, I wish I could figure out a way to connect them together. The program that they're in allows me to cut them down, but it doesn't give me any way to put them together. And the other editing pro software that I use for normal still normal video it's problematic. The other day, the video, I said, oh, can't add still pictures. And then after I added that video to the second first video, it turned around and let me add them. So, what are you going to do? I'm not exactly uh, computer literate myself. I've been calling myself computer illegitimate for many years. <laughs> I'm like the Ill Ill illegitimate child of computers. So... Even though I, I was seeing computers when they were in their infancy, my father working for the Navy as an aeronautical engineer, uh, I would go to work with him at, you know, five years old and see these humongous house-sized computers with the lights blinking and the big, you know, spinning tape reels and old nine yards. And you'd go through places that were basically hangars that were built during World War II that the place was built on and to get computer cables from one side of the room to the next room on the other side through the hallway <clears throat> they would put a raised deck about two feet high down all you'd be going down a hallway and then the, the hallway would just go up and down again like that where the cables were coming through and there was a lot of cables so they needed a lot of room um, Nowadays, they don't need anywhere near that. I mean, the amount of space one of those computers is probably equal to what this phone could do. If not, it, 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 more like a, <laughs> a wristwatch could do, is now um, filled with a you know, supercomputer. Although that place is no longer there. It's gone now. It's become houses. The airport's gone. There was an airport there along with uh, hangars and the only other centrifuge in the United States that was as big as the one in Houston, although that may still be there. Uh, they may have torn it down. I think the last time I drove by, I still saw the building 
where it was housed, and I remember being in it. I uh, never rode in it, I climbed in it, but they used to have open houses and would go there. And the first time I ever played a video game was against the military computer playing tic-tac-toe that they had rigged up. And I was 13, so that's 1972, 73. Something in that neighborhood, somewhere in that middle, that age. But they worked on a lot. It was a develop air, air and auto drill. Johnsville Naval Air Development Center in, uh, I believe it was Jamison, Pennsylvania, is where it's located. It was located. And uh, I actually have a sign out back here that was taken from that place when our my company I was working for demolished it and found it in the in the yard and researched to find out that the sign had come from Johnsville and I took it home and all it is is a big sign they would hang on a fence big letters warning property patrolled by military working dogs and uh, I thought it was kind of funny. The smaller letters by A big military working dogs, each letter. The warning was like that big. Now you can't barely see the word warning anymore as I hung it on my garage door for years at home because I had these two little tiny dogs, a 20 pound and a 25 pound dog. <laughs> and I just thought it was funny. At any rate, a friend of mine took a picture of it. He was a professional photographer. He took a picture of the front of my garage it sort of reminded them like of a hillbilly commune or something because of the sign. And it was messy. You know, it was an old uh, turn of the century timber frame barn, half falling down, surrounded by a working crane. And a, I had a bridge crane there, and I had, you know, engine blocks sitting there, and Volkswagen parts, and all sorts of things. When somebody keeps trying to come in, but they don't get to stay. I don't know what that's about. That's kind of weird. Keep seeing a number one pop up, and then it disappears. At any rate, I'll hang out here a while. And I'm sitting here watching YouTube on my TV. Trying to find out how soon Donald Trump's going to go to jail. The sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, oh, they're talking about Tina Turner now. That's a shame. Amazing life, amazing singer. Now I'll miss her. I'll miss her quite a bit. I liked her from the moment I first saw her in my, in my as I was probably uh, five or six years old. I listened to her stuff, I'm watching them live on TV back in the '60s. My everything was black and white. Maybe somebody's popping in because I put my puppy dog on there and they don't see a puppy dog. She's down here somewhere, chasing around somebody. She's a very active little dog. Usually has to play for a couple hours before she settles down and goes to sleep. And I'm wondering how the typhoon is coming this way. Oh man, I'm watching this truck was rolling. Holy crap, that's strong. It had a pickup truck rolling. Man, there's some serious winds coming from this one. They're calling it a super typhoon, but they're talking about it heading towards Manila at this point. There's a massive seaweed growth heading towards somewhere. It's the uh, NBC Nightly News. I gotta get almost all my news off of YouTube. They don't play much here. You get CNN, you get Fox, you get, which isn't news, it's propaganda. And uh, you get the BBC, you get Al Jazeera, as if you have a TV connection. Uh, a couple of different Philippine news networks, which typically they're in uh, Tagalog or sometimes Messiah. Um, there's a couple of those, I'm not sure what they are. Uh, maybe CSNBC. They primarily seem to be, you know, financial stuff. But uh, it's very limited on news. Uh, you're quite limited on weather, 
I miss the weather app in the U.S. You could see where the rain was, see when it was coming, figure out when it was going to hit. You don't get the Doppler radar here like you did in the U.S. Um, all I seem to get is like kind of satellite cloud cover stuff. And uh, a lot of times the BBC, which will broadcast out of Australia, uh, will talk about the weather and occasionally mention the Philippines. They seem to jump right up to uh, around the Philippines, but don't talk about the Philippines all that much. But now that there's a typhoon heading this way, they are talking about it. Um, oh, I didn't enable the chat. My bad. I think it's enabled now. I got the live chat. All messages are visible. I'd like to do a super chat, but I have no idea how to set it up. Unless that's something that just automatically gets set up. I don't have a bank account or something connected with YouTube, so maybe you have to be monetized before they let that happen. I don't know. I've been told that if you want your videos out in front of people more, do the super chat because you're making YouTube money. And they like that, so they push that forward more. And also, like I've been making the mistake, I put my... Uh, email and Facebook account on to contact me or us I should say uh, on my uh, in the comments and they said don't put anything from the first three lines it might take people away from YouTube to somewhere else so now I've started just adding a bunch of X's if you're wondering why there's X's um, hmm the problem with the generator and the neighbors has quieted down a little bit because we haven't had the power outage for a bit. Uh, the landlord being a pain in the ass agreeing to put in a wire and then turning around trying to claim that they said that oh, they put it in but I'd have to pay for it. And I've told them flat out I'm not paying for any wire. I have enough wire to reach the river with the guy and the maintenance guy and everybody agreed to put it. And they decided to put the little building another like 100 feet away well that's 100 feet of wire and the further you go the bigger a wire has to be if you lose wire creates resistance and the farther you go the more resistance so therefore the wire has to get bigger and bigger and bigger from the source you can start with the biggest wire and it's neck down but generally speaking you just run the wire the equal size all the way down if you do not things will melt and the wire will be a waste of money. They agreed to do the wire until they went and looked how much it was, which is 12,000 pesos, at least. And I don't have it. we got to pay 7,000 to the, to the priest. We have to pay... Um, what the hell else we got to pay for? I don't know. She's got to go to the doctor today, so i got to pay for that. Or her baby. Just had to pay 12,000 for this. And this was my father, my grandfather's wedding ring and a piece of petrified tree. Um, it's basically my ring. I can't stand wearing jewelry. And um, there were, this, this was 3,500 pesos to have this done. This was just a gold ring, a normal gold wedding ring, and then just wrapped around this stone. This is an odd thing. This is something that's happened with our relationship quite a bit. And of course, I can't even afford to buy a chain. So it's literally on a ring that was for my dog drew collar, which is comfortable, but not the right thing. But, and too long. Should be hanging right here, and it hangs further down. So I gotta figure that one out. At any rate, I hadn't thought about the symbology of, to me it was symbolic because it was like by circling this 211 million year old stone in uh, gold, a uh, ring from my grandfather, which was his wedding ring, it sort of says, our love is written in stone. That's what I was thinking all along. And I hadn't thought about it that much until I got this back and I actually didn't like the way it looked because they were supposed to wrap the outside edge 
and they put most of the gold on the back. And he explained to me, because it's not flat, he couldn't do that, so they had to do this. And they made it a little thick. I thought it was wrong. But then I forgot about something. Some years ago, while watching things on Stonehenge, and if you look at that, kind of looks like a stone from Stonehenge, don't it? Kind of. It actually looks like a head. Look at it. Looks kind of like a... Kind of like a Bart Simpson, sort of. I always thought it looked like a map of New Jersey, and if you look at New Jersey, it all, I think that actually Bart Simpson is a doodle written on the map of New Jersey. If you look at it, it looks like Bart Simpson from a left side profile, kneeling on his knees with his feet as Cape May. And there have been references in The Simpsons to Pennsylvania. I'm traveling to the DMV in Harrisburg. And to going to Pennsylvania, like on a Halloween episode, I believe. So I actually think that the Simpsons, Bart Simpson in particular, is, and if you look at the shape, it looks like his face, the Delaware River, the backward slope of his head. Everything about it, you could literally draw Bart Simpson over it very easily. And it would come out looking pretty close. Just, just put his nose and his eyes in there. At any rate. It also looks similar to Stones of Stonehenge, but, and that's one of the reasons I like it, is because it, it looked like New Jersey a little bit, actually the other way around. Um, in Pennsylvania, we would buy New Jersey maps living on the eastern side of Pennsylvania because it showed more detail of the first 50 miles into Pennsylvania, seeing it, or 30 miles or so, inboard of uh, Pennsylvania because of the shape of New Jersey, we would see the more detailed map than if you bought a Pennsylvania map which showed a 300 mile wide, 300 plus mile wide state and the detail in the bottom corner, which is where we were, didn't show much, which is why I, th I suspect that the person that drew Bart Simpson, and I'll never researched it, is either from Pennsylvania or New Jersey and possibly from the eastern side of Pennsylvania. I know the sisters work at the DMV in Harrisburg. Makes you kind of go, hmm. But there is a lot of references in Hollywood to uh, Pennsylvania and Bar uh, uh, Howard Stern kind of disses Pennsylvania, uh, Doylestown, my hometown, in a couple episodes. I wonder what that's about because uh, Maybe he's from that area or, or dealt with stuff in that area. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know he worked in Washington, I believe it was, on a radio show there for a little while. But the symbology of this, to me now, I'm realizing, is the, the ring itself represents my ancestor. And my... Or my my it's my grandfather's ring, so it represents my my grandfather, my ancestor. And watching a show once on Stonehenge, they went to Polynesia. I don't remember where. And there were standing stones down there. And when the guy was down there researching the standing stones, one of the locals, I don't know, was a excuse me, or this thing like crazy. Uh, was discussing these standing stones and asked him what they represented. And he said very quickly, it's the ancestors. Or I don't think he was talking about his standing stones. He showed the stone hinge to this guy and he says right away, oh, those are ancestors. So it's speculation that Stonehenge now could be representing ancestors. Well, Helen's father was murdered. And maybe this stone represents him. At least that's the way I'm looking at it. Luckily, it's not a very valuable thing. It is a gold ring, but it's not very valuable. And I didn't sell it. I could have sold it in the United States for about 300 bucks. Decided, well, 300 bucks wasn't worth giving away a family heirloom. And then I spent 3400 30, for them to turn it into this. And the stone is actually a piece of petrified wood that I picked up 
on my trek across the United States when I went through the petrified forest, which they say you're not supposed to do. But the Indians were selling tons and tons of it, which is probably why they say don't pick any up. And it was just on the walking path. It wasn't down where the stones were, or the trees were, but it was a piece of petrified wood. At any rate, I had hoped some people would come in and ask me questions. It went kind of well the other day after people came in, but it took a while for anybody came in. It's been 20 minutes now and nobody. I don't know what's happening. Let me see if I can get the puppy back over here. Honey, come here, honey, come on. That's my girl. That's my girl. Come here, baby. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come on. She's shy. She says, I don't want to be on camera. Mm. She wants to show you her butt. Look how pretty she is. Mm. Mm. In fact, if you like Shih Tzu's, Honey's Mama, last I heard, was pregnant. And will be having puppies either soon or already has. They may be available right now. And they charged me 8,000 pesos for her. Basically 160 bucks, a little less than that. And the woman who got her also got her brother and her sister. And I've seen her sister. Her sister's all brown. And her brother is black and white. And all of them have the same very happy-go-lucky very happy little puppy uh, personality. And she's got a little cigar in her mouth. So if, she, if she'd been a boy, I'd have named her Winston Churchill from that little dark spot of hair. Now, I cut her hair. I leave her with long hair on her head. She's a girl. She's kind of making a mohawk, but I'm getting changing it a little bit. But I trim her hair myself, and it's easier to cut it down to the skin, and it's uh, a lot easier to get rid of parasites if you, the hair is short you can see them quicker. Hmm. Reading what they're, they're talking about, I think some school shootings. They really need to get a handle on that in the U.S. I kind of thought it was ugly at first until I realized the symbology of the ancestor. The idea was that it creates a ring for me I don't have to wear on my finger. And it was my and my ancestor's ring. It was an ancestral stone from the United States. And a particularly interesting one. It doesn't really look, it doesn't, you don't see tree rings in it, but it's from the petrified bars. At least, hopefully, it actually is a piece of petrified wood. I do believe it is. But it's not the only stuff. Only stuff. It's not the only stones out there. But it's pretty much the primary stones that you run into out there. But uh, yeah, I could have bought polished stones, but I didn't want to spend money. And uh, Helen, for the wedding, looked through my mother's. My mother made handmade jewelry. A lot of earrings and other things. And I can't remember the whole thing. I said the bride should wear something borrowed, something blue. I think it's something old and something new. And one of the things she found, I asked her, go, she said she had seen a necklace, a silver necklace. And I said, well, go get it. At least it's nicer than this dog grip collar. And uh, there's just no money to buy the eight or eighty thousand, I think, gold wedding ch or gold chains and things like that. You can buy them here at the jeweler we, jeweler we were at. As I could possibly do a, a blog on that jeweler, I didn't ask them. And there's like three armed guards at the door, so you, you gotta ask that one. I can do a blog from outside, but not inside necessarily. Um, Oh shit, I forgot what I was talking about. Um, darn it. <laughs> it's 
Sorry, I, I got badly electrocuted in the military and my short-term memory is garbage. I forget stuff all the time, which you'll, you'll hear me talk about something in a video and then there's something else to bridge my attention and I forget all about the original thing I was talking about. That's why I said don't expect good accuracy on my channel. Because <laughs> I'll give you half a story and then forget about the rest of it. But I'm not really after accuracy. I'm just showing you what I see. Uh... Um, hopefully, I just ran into a guy the other day. I was having some keys done. I'm uh, thinking about doing a, a blog on where to get keys done, which is a very tiny shop, so it won't take very long. Um, it's actually across the street from, I think it's called Veterans Bank, and uh, near Lee Plaza. Lee Plaza won't let me video in there. I did put out one before I knew that I couldn't do it, which is the downtown grocery store. Now, if you look at that, that's the Leap Plaza grocery store, which is uh, probably the largest grocery store inside. Most amount of stuff. Uh, Hypermart's got a lot of stuff, but half the store is other things. You know, pots, pans, uh, furniture, uh, buckets. There's jewelry in, in there. And there's a bunch of food vendors in there, but that's not, I don't think that's their stuff. They rent out space. And a little pharmacy in there. It was also, was like, I think they just a space they rent out somebody. Very popular here, rent out space. Um, so one thing I wish I could obtain for Helen before I go would be a property with an apartment above or behind and spaces to rent out to people in a good location because there's plenty of them all over the place in the middle of, I mean, it's like you come across these little three or four shops together deal and they're all closed down because they're, they're too far away from everything. The ones, the only ones that seem to survive are little individual and even those are like you see them dead ones here all over the place. You know, there's just, uh, the amount of profit margin in most of these little shops doesn't amount to anything. Uh, Helen actually used to run a sorry, sorry store up above uh, Red Rock where she stayed for quite a while running a, a small sorry, sorry store up there. And the, even her boss who owned the property already just shut it down. I guess didn't make enough money. I never asked her about it. Um, but had to live up there on top of the mountain. Had no, you know, she didn't have a vehicle and the stuff was brought in. If you didn't have a vehicle to bring stuff in, forget it, you, were, you know. But uh, I don't know if there's another store up there or uh, if there was competition, but I don't think so. It was that tiny little hamlet. Um, there was a brown guy, uh, like basketball court up there. And... Uh, there's a school up there, and then just a few houses. Somebody is actually still building a house up there. It's just a little, like, top of the jungle, top of the mountain kind of place, uh, which there are places like that here. There's there's one above the Chinese sh or Japanese shrine that I went to. That's the, I didn't go to the shrine itself. Uh, I had gone up there uh, originally looking for somebody's house and just found, that's the one video where it says, I got lost on my way to heaven. Um, and there's a neat, uh, what looks like an apartment building being built up there that has, a, it'll have an amazing view, but you need something to climb the hill. And I know my trike, uh, the oil overheated, climbing up there, you could smell it cooking. By the time I got to the top of it, I didn't go all the way to the top. There's a village at the end, it's concrete road, but. Apparently there's a village all the way at the top, and uh, I didn't go all the way up, I wish I had. Because the oil was so hot, I actually just stopped for a while, let it cool down, and my phone worked there. So I called her up, told her where I was at, and she was ready to be picked up, so I just went down to get her. But it's a narrow two-lane concrete road, and there was a lot of places where it wasn't even safe to try and turn around because I would have to back up a couple times and uh, don't totally trust the brakes on this chariot. Um, I do, but I don't. They're mechanical brakes. They do work. And they do work reasonably well. 
but you're, when you're turning around and there's this big long downhill on either front behind you and it's hard to figure out where you are backing up to try and do a three-point turn on the top of a ridge like that and you're just this little strip at the top which I've done like riding my four-wheelers and things places but with a much more modernized vehicle than these chariots they are very they are very primitive they do work they are reliable they are somewhat bulletproof mechanically but uh and i mean they're built as trucks so the brakes do work like you typically see them loaded heavily they're going really slow they're putting along in a couple like second gear or something now I plan to do some more modifications to the bike over time as I got money, but the wedding and teeth and the baby come well the wedding the wedding and the baby come first before my teeth. And the fact that we have to relocate possibly in February. So that might take a little bit of effort. Oh hello, whoever that is. How you doing? Any questions? No questions. Okay. Hmm. It's Friday morning, 25th of May. Uh, I just thought I'd figure out what the hell I'll go live. See what see what happens. Here's the first one that's come in and stayed. Wherever you are, how you doing? Unfortunately, not enough people watch my channel yet. And for some weird reason, these on a lot these lives don't seem to finish loading i try to set them off and turn them off where i ended up deleting the one because it just sat there loading 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 after i shut and stopped the live stream oh getting back to that uh, the ring uh, to me now it symbolizes my ancestor and hers because these obelisks in Polynesia are considered ancestors. To me, that obelisk is her father who was murdered when she was like 13, 14 years old. Her father was in charge of building a school where she was, where the town where she was living, tried to give others in the town, multiple people in the town work so that it kind of spread the wealth around to, uh, you know, it's basically spread the wealth around. And apparently some worker that was working or maybe didn't get to work that day did not like that and murdered him. So now he's got all the work he wants, but it's buying bars, I guess, and it's, her father's dead. And then, of course, she had to go to the school he was murdered over. That's why she has a little bit of, she has a little bit of PTSD. I got to be careful sometimes, and you'll find this uh, if you get involved with a Filipino. They are very sensitive. You can set them into a cry real easy, um, and it's legit. They're not they're not playing you. Uh, well, maybe some are, but they tend to. They talk about tapo. In a sense, they kind of go into that, what they talk about with that, where they shut down and won't talk to you. But I've had to draw it out of her a few times to try and fix it. And I keep stumbling on my dick quite a few times with that with her. Uh, sometimes by minor things I think are no big deal. And other times by something that I shouldn't do. Like I was getting upset with her daughter because she kept putting like a glass of water on a chair and leaving it there undrank or even, you know, I was afraid it'd be milk and leaving it on my recliner and seeing one day trying to train her not to leave cups on chairs. I basically did a big act where I grabbed the cup and threw it across the room and made this big, you know, flamboyant thing to help her try and remember not to do it. And it absolutely terrified Helen. I didn't realize, she doesn't, they don't react like in terror when it's so like she just they they, they they hold it inside and start to notice later that she she was not responding to me and looking sad and drew it out of her that that's what, what it is so i basically i can't do that sort of flamboyant training uh i have to basically train a little better which i have learned 
<laughs> and guys, some guys, a friend of mine who came over with me, I didn't, I didn't know him before we came over on the plane, but I've become friends since. Um, and uh, his name's David, and he's from Tennessee. Uh, he was just on, I forget the name of the channel now, uh, talking about somebody else over here that was blogging and dissing him a little bit. Uh, he uh, He's coming back, and he told me that he, he'd be interested in finding a woman, but he was, didn't really want to find a woman with young children. He wanted to find one with some, you know, 12-year-old or something. And of course, in American standard, you're thinking, okay, no babysitters. I can go, you know, go party, whatever the hell, and I'll leave the kid at home. Well, that being said, depending on how the kid's raised, and I'm noticing here that the nuts are running the asylum, the kids are running the show. They're out of control, which is probably a big part of why a lot of people in the Philippines are a bit ignorant when it comes to being polite, especially on the highway or walking around. Uh, not so much in your face, but when you're driving around or walking, they can be ridiculously ignorant. Dive in front of you for one inch of ground and then stop cold. There's actually in the video where I'm walking to ground zero, you see a dude dive in front of the camera and then he immediately stops to talk to two people he was selling a bike to. But it was more important to him to dive in front of that, drive in front of me instead of letting me take one more step. And he could simply take one step behind me and been right there with these people. But that's the way they are here. Now, what I'm finding with the kids is it's not, I guess, it's not good face to uh, have to discipline your kid in public. So they don't. They let them do whatever they want. And the kids kind of, you go in through stores and the kids just kind of out of control, dancing around like a crazy person, making a bunch of noise, stuff that would be shut down in a U.S. store. You know, the parents would basically shut them down, be like, calm, calm down, you know, behave. Here, they just let them do it. And uh, so you get a 10, 14-year-old kid, and they're going to do what they want to do. And the older they are, the harder it's going to be for you to fix it. Uh, Trish is only five. She just turned five. I got her before she was even five, basically about four and a half. And I have been able to fix a lot of what she was doing. I mean, from the day one, when she didn't get what she wanted, all four limbs swinging and kicking her feet. And, ah, well, I went back to the stand with your face in the corner of the room. At the time, what we had was the bathroom in the hotel, and she was screaming for three straight hours and messed up everything in the bathroom. And for a while, we used the bathroom, but we had to clear it of all the stuff. But over time now, those standing in the corners have decreased exponentially. That it's happening maybe once in a week. Uh, even in the last couple of months, it's gotten even better. But if the kid is like, 12, oh man, you're in deep shit. If they're that far out of control, you'll never deal with it. So you're better off if the woman does have a child, that the child is young enough for you to change their behavior, preferably in the first couple of years before they're up and walking around and talking. Um, a good friend of mine here, Ray, has told me that if you uh, get them, get, be hard when they're young, because if you are not, you'll be a nightmare to go hard on them when they're young to get them. And that's what I've done with her. I've never spanked her. Oh, I wanted to a whole bunch. But I don't believe in the capital punishment for kids. I think it's better if you can convince them to do what you want them to do on their own. So you convince them it's their idea. Uh, basically be the con man and get them to decide on their own that that's what they should do you're better off. If you just force it down their throats, they'll rebel. And the older they are, the more they're going to rebel. So I suggest don't have that as a criteria. Doesn't mean that you can't find a woman with older kids and still be able to deal with them. But be aware, you want to meet them first <laughs> before you dive in. Because, uh, oh my God, if she had been 15 and that kind of behavior, and I've watched other kids with their parents here and seen it. 
and I've seen them do some of the same body movements. I was just driving down the road one day and watched a woman with her kid, and you could see that they do this sort of stand in place and stomp movement that I've seen Trisha do. And that was, I didn't like that. I don't agree with that kind of movement. And I'm driving down the road and there's an older woman standing there with like a 12 year old and the 12 year old girl just goes right into that stomp right away. Like, no, I do what I want. And I don't like it. But I've seen Trisha since I've been using the, I mean, basically we use here, we use the stairwell, nice concrete stairwell. It's a, it goes one way than the other and it's actually worked out well as a, a place to send her to stand in the corner, where she can scream her head off all she wants and none of the neighbors hear it. And uh, I've seen her do that up there, but not in a while. She st kind of stopped doing that because she realized that doesn't, they realize things don't work anymore. And they finally give up and standing there in the corner. I've been there, I've been that kid standing in the corner. Oh, here we go. Same shit, different day in Dumaguete, oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I used to say same shit, different day, same same day, different shit. Either way, it works the same. You know. Now John's doing better. If you're wondering, he's still in the hospital. He's still not talking, but he's doing a lot better. He's seeming to respond to people. I checked on his bike at the Brown guy yesterday. And they say we gotta get to go to a lawyer to fill out some paper. I forget what they had. They they called it, but it's a letter that'll release the bike. Which there's no way he's gonna be riding that bike for a while. Physically, just just from laying in a bed for a week, you got a lot of rehab right there. Even if the brain comes back, uh, he is responding to stuff. He's reacting to his hoses and adjusting his hoses, but he's not talking. He's not even responding cognitively to some statements. He's a very strong Trump, Trump supporter and I'm anti-Trump and even trying to say, which Biden good, right? And not even a, no, no, that sort of thing. Uh, he just stares just like I am now. That's about all we're getting from him, and him breathing hard. I'm um, assuming that was supposed to be John. You forgot the H, J-O-H-N. Uh, he lives in Dowen. Uh, his girlfriend did ask him, does he want to go back to America? And that is, he would basically say no. But he didn't say no, he can't. So doesn't seem to be able to say no, but he expressed it sort of that he doesn't want to go back. But uh, I, I have a bad feeling that he has some kind of brain damage from the, because your frontal lobe here, and I think is where I've seen a cut on his head from his helmet. And that's where they do a lobotomy. And that helmet, in a sense, may have given him a lobotomy by creating the pressure on his brain. And I'm just scared to death he's not coming back. And he was, I was, hadn't asked him yet. He was going to be there for our wedding. I was going to ask him to be my best man. But uh, now I don't know how that's going to play out. Uh, I was hoping more people would come in with more questions. But, uh, Running out of things to think of to talk about. Uh, my trike's for sale if anybody's interested. I'm selling a Caruza. We need the money. 80000 it's yours with registration. It's good till next year. Um, I have a plate already. Uh, I've upgraded it a little bit, put some LED headlights in it. The headlights were not very good, and they're a lot better. Could be better than that, but they're better. Um, they weren't cheap headlights. They were like 50 bucks a piece from Amazon. But uh, I think the headlight bucket itself is not good enough to produce the light properly. But it does, it does much, much better. 
before it was like you're driving around them there were no lights at all uh, when it had a normal uh, halogen bulbs um, but had a couple of uh, add a bar light to it and be fine and I actually have a couple of bar lights but I wasn't I was going to hang on it but I'm not going to now uh, I did add some air horns to it, but I'm gonna pull them back out because we could we had to shut them down because I had lost track of the relay to run them, and it was uh, pulling too much voltage and running my battery down, or and it blew a fuse. And I just disconnected them. They're still mounted on there, but I, I, they're the normal horns hooked back up again. Um, I cut a cup holder in it, so it would take a cup like this. I'll throw in a cup. I have a bunch of them I bought off of Amazon um, that are uh, insulated uh, tumblers with lids. And uh, I'll gladly throw one of those in with the deal. And they do work good on it. Uh, got it on the clutch side so you can keep on throttling down the road while you grab the cup. Uh, only other change I did, I did, I put the insulation uh, underneath the top, and it does work. Uh, I think they would work better if it was on the outside, but you can't really mount it on the outside. It has to be glued maybe to a flat metal surface to put it on the outside. Uh, I think it would work a lot, be a lot more effective on the outside because the silver side should be towards the sun instead of on the inside, but it's more durable than the white side. So the silver side's pointed inward. Um, and I changed the tires. The original tires were too small and it made the gear ratios way off. Uh, could even be changed to a little bit bigger tire than what I put on. I put the same tires that the Chariot had because what I did is the Chariot came with four tires and I took two of the tires, which are drive tires, all the way around on the Chariot put two of them on the back of the Caruza and then bought two steering tires for uh, one for each bike. So I've got the two steering tires or the drive tires on the back and a steering tire on the front. Um, that works quite well, runs good, starts good. I had bought a new battery for it. It turns out it didn't need a battery. There was a wiring, a plug that was bad and the wire power wasn't getting through the wire, uh, wire to charge the battery. But we didn't realize that until after I changed the battery and then it went dead. And uh, I'm gonna be putting the original battery back in because I need a battery for the Caruso, or for the Chariot. And the batteries aren't cheap, they're 5,000 pesos. They're, some things here are not cheap. You know, 5,000 pesos, there's, no, yeah. It was over a hundred bucks, over a hundred bucks, or around a hundred bucks, fifty-five hundred, something like that. And it's actually a little bit too big for the bike, but uh, yeah, I still have the original battery. I've been keeping it on the battery tender, so I'm gonna put that back in. Um, hmm. Well, I'll get some questions soon because I gotta go take a piss. We're waiting now to take Helen to the doctor this afternoon for her uh, to uh, check up for the baby. So there's another couple hundred I got to put, put out for that visit. Um, hmm. Getting back to the generator, uh, I do have enough wire to put the generator where the barangay wanted me to put it. Any idiot. Landlord put the generator house that she built for the generator over 100 feet away, her brother did. Now they're gonna be building a swimming pool back there, maybe that's why they did it, but I'm not paying that extra money for wire, I ain't got no money. <coughs> and where I was running it in the driveway is perfectly legit. Just the neighbor don't like the noise. He keeps complaining about the fumes, but when the barangay was here, I had telltales hanging, on the, hanging up out there showing the wire blowing away from his apartment anyway, so he was full of shit. At any rate, uh, I suspect that come February they will not want to really renew our lease because we're not just going yes ma'am and doing what they say, which is fine by me. 
one neighbor here is a pain in the ass. The other one's crying about me parking the two trikes in front of the house, even though I got a legitimate reason to park them there. He just doesn't like it and decided that I'm a dick because I'm parking the two trikes out there. He, when he moved in, there was only two people renting and nobody in his way when he would come and go, so he had the whole, whole driveway to himself. There's room in front of every single apartment to park at least two cars. You could even park two full-size, well, not American-sized pickups, but the smaller trucks out here are two small, smaller cars. And frankly, if I bought a mini truck or a minivan, I'd have all three of them parked out there. There's enough room. And that's sorry to be his problem. You know, I tried to work with him to see if I can park him different. He don't want to listen. But he's Canadian, and they're kind of like that. You know, their ears shut down. They just, they did, kind of like Kensington. Huh? Everybody's ever been to Kensington. It's sort of like my rules kind of idiots. But he was a nice guy at first. He just decided he didn't like it. So I didn't want to live near it. Two, two people are being a pain in the ass. So and we're going to, we've been wanting to look for a house anyway, probably up and by us. Which means I wouldn't be doing as many Doomageddy videos. What's up, babe? Yeah. Huh? Almost back bothering you? No. Uh, she's just outside hanging up some clothing. We get most of our laundry done. Uh, in in town, there's a uh, laundromat along with a hand wash laundry. And we get, uh, oh, we, we got to pick up our hand wash today. Maybe I should run out and do that before we go anywhere. Um, Anyway, we've been on almost an hour here and nobody's come on. Except me rambling. Oh, what's this? Ten year old shot by police. Oh my goodness, what the hell is this? Ten year old shot by the police? Is that what I'm looking at here? Oh. Oh, eleven year old. Oh man, what was this about? I'll have to rewatch this. Oh, police are out of control in America. That's part of the activism I was doing there. Trying to get them back in shape. They're, they're too quick to just shoot everything. I watched a video, and this is out there. A cop comes into a house. There's, I believe, another cop in the house. I'm not sure how many are in the house, but there's two kids sitting on a couch and a little bitty dog on the couch, like a, maybe a 10 pound dog. And you know how little dogs can be. They see this cop come in, the dog reacted. <laughs> and a tiny little dog and a cop pulls his gun and fires and killed the little girl on the, t on the uh, couch. Because a, a little dog might have bit him. So all right, you're a policeman, you've given up your, some of your rights to safety and you're not the most dangerous job in America, look it up, a logger is. You are like 17th on the list of dangerous jobs. Someone who picks crops in a field is in more danger than a policeman. And the public is very much in danger of the police. Here, not so much. They're, they're totally different here. Uh, they always seem to be a sort of like a tribal chieftain that wants to settle disputes, not create them and, and not st not showing up expecting to get knifed or stabbed or shot they just try and work with you and the only reason they're getting expected to be knifed stabbed or shot is because people are scared to death of them so they're more likely to react in fear mm -hmm. there was a case down in texas cops got the wrong address or supposedly got the wrong access they showed up at the wrong house. They shot the two people and their dog. They claimed, oh, what are we? Uh, yo, bro, you got 15,000 pesos? I'll be glad to buy some teeth. I don't have the money. I'm working on it. And if you listen to the blog, you'd know that. Why? Some people, people bust my balls about the damn teeth. Send me some money, bro. I'll get some teeth. Got other expenses here, man. It ain't free here. I don't have a lot of money. 
it's 300 bucks to get my friggin' temporary dentures. I was originally going to get implants, but I don't have the 20,000 it still cost here. It's 50, 60,000 in the United States. And probably 20,000 for temporary dentures, but here it's 15, it's, it's 300 bucks. I just don't have 300 bucks. I got a baby coming. I got a wedding planned. <clears throat> and I'm living on $1,300 a month, less than $1,300 a month. I got a $400 a month bill for the apartment. That electric bill is $100. You got money for fuel, money for food for three people. <coughs> so, Marion Volcano, I guess it's can barely read it because I don't have my glasses. Well, that's his choice, bro, and I met him. He didn't look too flippant to me. <coughs> I gave him a ride in my chariot about three months ago. Scared the shit out of him because I was still driving too fast. But I don't choose to go too flippant. I have no money to buy teeth. Uh, Sunshine Shoulders, I don't know what he makes, but... He's possibly making money off of YouTube. I don't know what he gets his money from. Well, I've met him a few times. He has moved to Sicky Whore, so maybe I'll run into him a little more. I don't go to Sicky Whore often because I don't want the 20 bucks to stick my damn chariot on the ferry. Now, I can go over there and visit a buddy of mine who has a mini truck and get driven around, but uh, I'm just one of those people that doesn't like being driven around. But at any rate, there's the deal on the freaking teeth. Live with it. What's that, babe? Have you seen that balloon? Yeah, it's behind the water tank. Huh? Behind the water right here. I brought it down from upstairs and it's right behind the water. Okay. It seems like a better place to put it. It's more out of the way and easier to find. So I just didn't tell you it was there. But anyhow, I have no idea what the hell else I was talking about other than I had to take a damn piss. Which I'm going to go take a piss, so you're going to have to join me for a piss. <laughs> Don't worry. You won't have to see my Johnson. Ugh. You might see my bathroom, but you won't see my Johnson. And frankly, I lost my teeth because of the gastric bypass. They don't leave, they leave out the fact that you're going to be throwing up a lot and your teeth are going to fall apart like you're a bulimic. Anyway, here. You can watch the Helen show. She's going to do some cleaning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we used to call it when I was talking to her online. We called it the Helen show. There you go. And I'm going to go take a piss. Mm -hmm. You're on the Helen show again. Uh -huh. Wish you the best. Well, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, first he's giving me grief about my teeth. Now he's like, wish you the best. <laughs> he's like, why don't I get some teeth? Because I ain't got no damn money for teeth. 
Anyway. Oh. Yeah, it says, man, why don't you get some, a set of teeth? You look ridiculous. Yeah, and it's like, wish you the best, man. I think he signed off. Because there's only, oh no, might be still here. Anyhow. I take life as it comes, bro. Dog showed up when I had money. I still thought I still had enough money for my teeth. But I hadn't done my visa yet all the way. And the visa ended up costing me more than I expected. I have another 10 grand I can grab in January. I got to wait till January to get it again. And uh, we'll wait and see how that plays out. Oh, I forgot about that, babe. We will have money to move. I forgot about that 10 grand. I forgot about that other 10 grand that I got in the bank. I'll be able to get that in January, two months before we got to move. So I'll have money to move with. Um, we are going to look at a place right here in Bakong that's up for sale. But uh, it's on the National Highway. It has a piece of land next to it. I'd like to get the whole nine yards house and land, but it's for rent, not for sale. I mean, for sale, not for rent, excuse me. Well, John, also dyslectic, dys dyslexic. I invert things backwards. Um, and uh, hoping that'll play out that I can rent it to own, maybe, or maybe even work a deal. But we'll be married by then, so I'd be able to go to the bank and get a loan. But I believe, just like anything in, in America, you need down money. And I may not have the down money they require by then, although the 10 grand might do it, and I still might not have teeth. I kind of was hoping you two might kick in a little bit and, you know, get a couple of hundred bucks a month, or a hundred even, and make a big difference. But uh, that's why most of my videos are uh, where it doesn't cost me much to do them, either just some fuel at times when I got the fuel. What's that? Oh, mm, she found a little screw. I'm trying to think of where that's from. Looks familiar. Definitely wasn't from anybody that rented here before. We were the first ones to rent this apartment. Therefore, causing some of the pro finding some of the problems that the landlord blamed on us, like the loose toilets that she claimed I ripped them loose of the floor because I wanted bolts. And people are nuts. They'll always blame you for shit here. The landlords will blame you for breaking stuff. Now, one of the weird things on the lease here was that uh, because everything's brand new, you are responsible for maintenance. So I tend to tell them, I said, wait a minute, you buy substandard junk, put it in here and it breaks, and I'm responsible for fixing it? I don't think so. The only thing that they were, I think it was written more for the stuff with new furniture, but like an air conditioner or something, it breaks, they can kiss my ass, I'm not paying to fix it. You'd never run into that in the United States. But I don't know if that's normal real estate rules here or not. In fact, uh, Jenny and I, I talked to her the other day, and uh, it occurred to me to do a video uh, with it, with her, and uh, as a uh, conversation about crazy landlords, because she is friends with our realtor that got us this place. The owner has been calling the realtor, saying that we're friggin' nut jobs. And Jenny's been telling her friends, said no, there's nothing wrong with them people. They're fine. And uh, I've been telling her some of the goofy shit. I even showed on her text back and forth to the to the owners about shit about with the generator. Uh, from the day we moved in, we were given permission to use the generator, and it's a big deal because at first, where they told us to run it, the fumes were coming into the back of the building because of the prevailing winds here. I set up a big fan the next time around, but it wasn't able to blow the fumes out enough. That's when the brown guy came the first time and complained, or the guy complained, and I shut it down. And I also told him, I said, well, look, I got to run it every now and then every couple of hours for a while. He told the guy, oh, he's gonna run it every time for 10 minutes and the dude sat out there with a fucking stopwatch. There was no exact time set. At any rate, 
I did like run it like once every two hours so the freezer wouldn't go down. Uh, I got a bunch of shit frozen. I have dietary issues because I got no bloody fucking teeth. Along with being having a gastric bypass. So I can't lose my food. <coughs> and I blew a big load on that generator. I shipped one. Turned out to be a piece of shit. Brand new generator. So don't bother shipping a generator. You can buy one here. By the time you're done paying for the shipping, you, you, the difference, you'd buy one here. And then, of course, you can take it back if it's fucked up. Uh, although I do maybe suggest shipping a good helmet. People said you can get good ones here. I haven't seen anybody wearing a helmet here, here yet that looked like good quality, like a dot-approved helmet in the United States. Even a cheap dot approved helmet in the United States. Well, most of the people here are walk, going around wearing things you would put on a you would wear if you were on a bicycle, if they're wearing one at all. And it is a rule: you do have to wear a helmet here. You do have to wear proper shoes. You're not allowed to ride in flip flops. But people do it all the time. I've seen people drive barefoot now on a on a chariot. I do not have to wear a helmet. I do not have to wear proper shoes. I can drive whatever I want. Trike drivers. They're required to wear pants. Seems like an odd rule, but that's what they got. And of course, they have to wear proper shoes as well, but they don't have to wear a helmet. And of course, the riders don't have to wear a helmet. But if you're on a bike, you're technically supposed to have a helmet and proper shoes as a driver. And I said, is it, hey, do you, Helen, mm -hmm. do you know if the riders on a bike are required to wear a helmet? When? When they're riding on a bike? Yeah. Oh, they are also? Okay. Yeah. Riders are also required to wear a helmet. Now, they have increased police patrols here in Dumaguete recently. The police changed when the governor was assassinated. They took all the police that were here, sent them somewhere else, and brought police from different areas. Uh, I guess to can make sure there was nobody that was biased in there, so they just replaced everybody and moved them all out to other places. Because of that, there's a fresh copper in town. Fresh cops want to swing their dicks. They're running more police patrols, and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, checkpoints you go through. Which I've never been stopped at any of the checkpoints. They more stop people on bikes, I think, than they do cars. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've had a guy do a 180 right in front of the cop and almost hit me coming back the other way because he saw the checkpoint and he just did a 180 and hauled ass. A lot, and probably 80% of the people out there don't even have a driver's license. They, the bike's not registered. And that's where, you, where they talk about worrying about buying a used bike. The problem isn't that they're necessarily trying to scam you. It's that it costs too much money to transfer the registration so they don't do it. They can get away with driving a bike without a pla even a plate on the darn thing. You can also register the vehicle or continue to register the vehicle under the name of the original owner and continue to do that. Everybody might have got a truck. The guy's been dead six years. He just keeps registering it under his buddy's name. And he can sell it to somebody as long as they do the same thing and keep running it forever. The dude's dead. He's not going to show up and get it. Uh, but that can happen where you can buy a vehicle goes through a bunch of hands. The guy who originally owned it thinks, maybe suspects his name's never been removed, show up at your door and say, give me my damn truck or give me my car. So it's not that they're trying to scam you. It's simply because of the way everything's set up here that you can end up in one of these conundrums. Though there's probably still ones that are trying to scam you. <sighs> well, there's only been two people come in in an hour. It's an hour and ten minutes, so I'm giving up. Hopefully I'll be able to upload this one and people will go look at my ramblings. If not, oh well, try it on another day. Probably going to do it again tomorrow, whether it be Saturday morning here, Friday night there. Have a good one, everyone.